Hi, I'm Tony Santo. Welcome to my channel. So this is going to be the first of a series of videos that I'm going to produce on drum scanning. I figured I'd start off in telling the story of how I got the drum scanner. Before we get into this drum scanning story, I'd like to take a moment to ask for your help. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please like the video. Please share the video with your friends. Please leave a comment below. I read all the comments and I try to respond to everyone's comments uh, and engage in the discussion that's unfolding. Please hit the bell icon notification so that you're going to be aware of any new videos that I produce. I want to first tell the story of how I got the drum scanner and the road and the challenges that it took me to get to the point where I could actually get a great scan from my film. It's not an easy journey. It was filled with trials and tribulations, so I think there's an important lesson that all of us can learn from that experience. Drum scanners back in the day were the epitome and uh, basically the benchmark for scanning film and digitizing film. They use PMT tubes or photomultiplier tubes versus uh, CCD sensors or CMOS sensors. They were very expensive as a result of that. We're talking $50,000 plus. In the current market today, you could probably pick one up for maybe five to $10,000, depending upon what make and model uh, it is. So how did I get my drum scanner? Well, I ended up picking up a Haltech 6500 Scan Master. When I was working for National Geographic Fine Art Galleries, I got linked up with Max Art Productions. I was acting as a liaison between my employer and, and the printing part of it. So I was fortunate enough to meet Nick Landis, the owner of Max Art Productions. We got to talking one day about drum scanners and he said, hey, I used to have one of those, but I think I sold it on eBay or something. And he wasn't quite sure what happened to it. But then uh, some time passed and he approached me again and said, you know what? I was cleaning out my container that I have for storage and I found the drum scanner. Do you want it? <laughs> and of course, without even hesitating, of course I want the drum scanner. <laughs> you know, as a film photographer, uh, especially with large format and wanting to print huge, ginormous prints, you want to try and pull all that detail out of the film and the drum scanner really is uh, the best tool for that. So I jumped on that opportunity and brought the drum scanner home. And you may be sitting there thinking, wow, that's great, you know, boy, you probably started drum scanning right away. And the truth of the matter is that I didn't start drum scanning any images until, believe it or not, 2021. <laughs> I got this thing in 2019. So it took me quite a long time to get all the components that I needed as well as get the thing operational. And let me tell you a little bit about my trials and tribulations regarding this drum scanner. When I got the drum scanner, that's exactly what I got. A drum scanner <laughs> with no cords. Uh, I did have software that did not have the software dongle that's necessary for the operation of the drum scanner. There was no computer, no drum mounting station. There was a drum, however, it was crazed beyond use. So there was no way you're going to be able to scan any kind of color negative or color positive film <laughs> using that drum. Now, I'm not trying to sound negative or uh, unappreciative of what Nick uh, did for me, but it was a lot of work to get this thing up to speed and to even be functional. And I'll produce, again, a series of videos that uh, I'll get into all the different components that you're going to need for drum scanning. But just know that a lot of these components are very difficult to find because they're no longer produced. And so you have to look to the used market in order to pick these things up. And it took me a long time to acquire uh, a lot of these components. In fact, I really have a gentleman by the name of Armando Vergara to thank because he ended up selling me quite a bit of the parts that I just couldn't find. So for example, the drum mounting station, uh, a couple of drums, the large and the smaller drum, those are all really challenging to find, especially that drum mounting station. Wow, no one's got that. Uh, drums come up every now and then, but not the drum mounting station. 
So, and then of course there's all the computer components, uh, the SCSI card. If you don't know what a SCSI card is, then uh, that's probably before your time. <laughs> but a SCSI card is essentially the card that allows the computer to uh, interface with the actual drum scanner. Uh, so that was um, another thing that I had to get. And of course the computer system has to be from that era. We're talking the 1990s, early 2000s here. So we're talking Windows XP. Um, so you can imagine the struggles I've had. And then of course there's just, you know, the, the software to make the thing operate. I ended up getting Silverfast uh, to make the scanner operate correctly. And uh, then when I did get it operating correctly, it turns out that um, my larger drum, the 8-inch drum, that it was overexposing the film and so the highlights were all blown out and I couldn't use the large drum. And by the way, if anybody can let me know what is wrong with the Fori, that's the mechanism that actually extends out on the large drum uh, to read the actual film, uh, I would be much appreciative. Please leave a comment below because I still haven't been able to figure that one out. I can use the smaller four inch drum, uh, which is nice uh, and I don't get any kind of blown out highlights. It just, the scans are just absolutely beautiful. And it turns out the smaller drum is the one that you want to get because it allows up to 5,000 DPI, which is absolutely phenomenal. So it's been a struggle. It's been a very challenging path. And to this day, there are still challenges to be had. Sometimes the machine doesn't quite uh, operate the way that uh, you want it to and it's mostly on the software side so Windows XP and Silverfast sometimes have glitches and you end up toasting some scans um, and having to start all over again so there was a lot that went into getting me to the point where I am today but as I mentioned earlier I'm going to produce a series of videos that uh, will show you how to mount your film onto the drum and talk about all the different components and uh, look at the specs etc uh, to help anybody else out who um, might be in a similar situation to the one uh, that I've been. So. Once again, I want to thank Nick Landis for giving me the drum scanner and setting me on this path and journey to basically allowing me to optimize my film that I've worked so hard to get these images um, and uh, being able to make very, very large prints with exquisite detail. I'd also like to thank Michael from ScanSolutions.com who has absolutely been indispensable in helping me figure out and troubleshoot a lot of the issues that I've had with my Howtech drum scanner. So thank you very much, Michael. I appreciate it. And of course, I want to thank all my viewers for watching this video and for supporting me in my channel endeavors.